Hey gang, it's Maria here from Goalie Training Pro TV. Uh, welcome to episode 14, where we're going to talk about um, a strategic approach to your off-ice training. Because it's a, is it one of those tricky things? Is it 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 kind of seems simple? And even those of you who've used my programs, and you know, you look at them, and you're like, yeah, yeah, that all makes sense. But um, there's so many you know, little paths that you can go down and little rabbit holes and, you know, ways that you can get lost when you're just trying to figure it out on your own. So I'm going to try to sort of enlighten you <laughs> and help you understand the strategic approach to it. So it's never just sort of a collection of exercises like, well, we could do this and this kind of looks cool. And, you know, it's always, um, you know, okay, well, we need to work on this um, characteristic or this element. And then once we have that established, then we can add in this layer. And, um, you know, it, it's, yeah, it's very simple once it's all been put together, but getting there, it's kind of like, oh, geez, how do I do that? So, um, you know, and I think the other thing is too, you'll see in programs a lot of, a lot of similarities to what the skaters do. So that's a misconception a lot of people have is that, oh, well, you know, I shouldn't be doing, uh, you know, squat. Well, we don't actually do back squats. We haven't done back squats in here for probably eight years, but <laughs> that's another episode. But, um, you know, you still need to build that strength and, and um, you know, in a functional way. So there will be some common things. Split squats, you'll see. We'll still do some single arm dumbbell press, some single arm cable press, push ups, even um, chin ups. You know, there will be common things. It's not, it isn't what whatever you think it, it should be it isn't standing on a stability ball juggling um you know squatting trying to squat heavy weight on a balance board those are people who are kind of um then they they think they know what they're trying to train and they're kind of thinking well a goalie needs balance and they need to be strong and they need hand eye coordination so we'll just do it all at once um it's just people that don't understand the science and the background um, to, to sort of weed out where the best path is. It, yeah, I, I had to go to university for six years to sort of get some idea of it. And then I've been a strength coach for, this might be my 23rd year, but you know, and I'm just sort of still figuring it out. <laughs> so, uh, so don't worry about that too, because it, it looks cool and it kind of makes sense on the surface, but not the right way. So, you know, there's specific things we need if you want wider butterfly flare and to get it safely. Um, it's same thing with baseball pictures. You see it all the time. People, you know, like, oh, well, we do like internal external rotation with a heavy baseball or we have them throwing a heavy ball to build strength in their shoulder and power. Yeah, and that might even work for a bit, but it's actually adding exponential wear and tear to a joint that's already so vulnerable to injury. So we really have to pay attention to that. Um, so, you know, work on some things working on quick, quicker crease movement, both from your skates and from a butterfly position. I'll help you get deeper splits, again, safely and within the context of being a goalie, not a gymnast. <laughs> um, and just help you stay crisp and quick right through, you know, to the end of the third period. Because a lot of you run out of gas, and I think you don't realize that regular, like regular people cardio uh, doesn't build goalie stamina. So that's a big problem. And the key is to kind of know which 20 to 30 <laughs> percent it, it needs to be specific because that reminds me of that joke about um like a plumber and uh, like there's a factory that's flooding and they say well you know a plumber comes out and he looks it all over and they're like well can you fix it and he says yeah i can fix it and they say well how much will it cost well it's going to cost you know three thousand bucks okay like great like go ahead you know fix it and then the place fill them with water and you know the it's shut down and so the plumber, you know, goes along to the spot and um, pulls out his pipe wrench and he hits a pipe and the water stops. And, uh, you know, he says, they say, well, 3,000 bucks just for hitting, you know, the, the pipe with a wrench. And he says, well, you got to know where to hit it. <laughs> you know, so it's, uh, it's kind of one of those things that there's lots of things, places you could hit it, but it's knowing the right spot. So um, think of it in layers. Think of it in, as in building layers of armor. And so you need to start from the inside out. You need to do the right 
um, order of operations. Even if you think of a knight getting dressed in his armor, it's not like, okay, we're gonna put on the big outer shell of armor and then your underwear. <laughs> you know, it's like, you're gonna get on your underwear and then probably the chain mail and then the thing, you know, so it has to all be in order. Cause that's how you make yourself successful, but also durable as you go. Um, and then a huge element, and I almost don't talk about it as much as I would like to, is just injury prevention. I weave it into all my programs. I try to kind of disguise it in there. Like when your you know, mom used to put spinach in with your potatoes or something so you would eat it. Um, because nobody cares about, you know, there not many of you like say 17, 18 year old goalies like, oh, I sure hope I don't get hurt. You're like, I've never been hurt. You don't think about it until it happens to you. And then you sure think about it and you wish you'd done stuff. So that's really your number one priority but the place we start is with a good thorough assessment uh, you know like can you move in all the planes that you're supposed to be able to move can you move in your hips can you you know get in a good you know deep squat pattern with your chest up and your knees out and your feet flat on the floor like that's a pretty essential pattern if you're going to be a goalie and if you don't have that pattern you know then the question is okay well is this a restriction in mobility? Is that restriction in mobility because um, of a joint restriction, a capsular restriction, just some tight muscles? You guys always assume, you know, I just need to stretch, um, you know, I just need to stretch a little bit more. But, you know, sometimes stretching is, is the wrong thing for you to do. Is it a stability issue? So do you have that mobility? Like, you know, maybe if we had a stool set down low on the ground, you could get your bum on the stool and get in the position, but you can't actively do it. Well, then it's maybe a stability issue or even a strength issue. So we need to figure out all that, and we do that via an assessment. And it, you know, and, and there's some specific things we have to look at for a goalie. Because also, if your hip internal external rotation is off, your and we're all biased one way towards a little more internal rotation or a little more external rotation. Well, if we're a goalie, so again, this would be internal rotation like your butterfly. This would be external rotation. You get about, most people get about 90 degrees total movement. But again, if I'm a goalie and I'm biased towards external rotation, so maybe, you know, those, that's those of you who have a really narrow butterfly. Well, you need to know that and then we want to monitor okay well can we improve that to some extent with our stretching and our mobility work but also where are the limitations and we won't just keep smashing on you if your body's designed you know that this is how much internal rotation it has again if it's muscular or capsular we can get some improvement but if that's just the bony structure of it and we're trying to smash on it constantly it's just it's going to accelerate our wear and tear again so we want to know where those limitations are and, and try to see what's causing them. Um, so we start with a mobility and a stability. So mobility is kind of a combination of flexibility and stability. So I kind of put them together as that mobility umbrella. And a lot of these things should improve. We should be able to improve the quality of your deep squat, the quality of your thoracic spine rotation, of your hip mobility, of your hip stabilization, your general core stabilization. If things aren't improving, um, even though we're sort of doing the right things, then it's time to send you to get an assessment by an allied health professional. It might be a sport physiotherapist, maybe you have a sport chiropractor who's really good at doing assessment and doesn't just kind of crack you and send you on your way. So figure out, okay, well what, you know, yeah, maybe it is a capsular restriction and you need a, a massage therapist or a manual therapist to help you work that out so that then we can keep building. So it's not like, a, oh, well, I'm not injured. I don't need to see someone. It's like, okay, this isn't quite working the way we'd like it to. It, you know, it's like the car when you, um, and I was a worse for doing this when I was a teenager, but you know, you'd sort of hit a curb <laughs> and then the steering wheel would be a little bit like, mm, but you'd be like, oh, it's fine. You know, but then, and my dad, my dad would get in the car and he'd be like, oh my gosh, you know, the steering's out and take it in right away to get it fixed because he's the guy that had to pay the bill when the tires wore out or the brakes wore out or whatever else bad things that I did to that poor, Mount, it's called the Mountain Family Truckster. It was a Ford Country Square station wagon, the big like 1980s station wagons with the wood paneling. 
it was sick. <laughs> I'd blown all four speakers except for the rear right speaker in the thing. Bad. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, so then once we've got your good mobility and stability, and it's not to say like, oh, we don't go and you don't pick up a dumbbell until your mobility and stability is perfect. You know, we, these things blend, but our focus, our, our emphasis is on the mobility and the stability to start with. Then we want to go to strength. So, well, wait. Yeah, yeah, okay. So uh, I lost where I was. So then we're going to talk about strength. But again, we build it in layers. So we don't just start smashing out weights in the gym. This, uh, like when I was worked at the sport medicine clinic as the exercise specialist up at the Fowler Kennedy, they, they did a booming business and people that did this who like started going to the gym and then it's like, man, I was getting stronger. So I just kept lifting heavier and heavier weights. And then about usually between six and 10 week mark, they'd be in the clinic with like shoulder tendinosis or, uh, you know, knee pain or something funny going on. And they're like, oh, and like things are going so great in the gym and I was getting stronger and feeling really good. I don't know why this happened. Well, it's because they didn't give their body time to adapt. So our muscles get stronger faster than our connective tissue. So we need to give it time to adapt and, and sort of prepare for the big strength training that's coming. We also want our stabilizers to build up some stamina. So we wanna do long duration sort of sustained contractions. And we do that in the first phase, what I call the movement phase, where we use some very rather slow eccentrics. So, you know, if we're doing, let's say we're doing a split squat, just for example, we're gonna go down one, two, three, we might even pause and then come up. So that we're working that muscle in a, under lengthening tension, we're getting our connective tissue under tension for a sustained period. You know, that's about a five second per rep exercise. And if we're doing, and we'll do pretty high volume, 10 or 12 on each side. So that's about a minute on each side of, of sustained contraction or fairly sustained contraction. And again, looking that we're keeping our good movement patterns and challenging some different movement patterns. Actually, one of my favorites for goalies, it's in almost all of your um, first phase training programs, is just a sumo goblet squat. So if we're here, double hip width stance, holding a dumbbell or kettlebell here. Again, not super heavy, but it's getting those knees wide, coming down to a count of even four or five, two, three, four, five, maybe a hold right here and then coming back up. So working those muscles that support and protect your hips while also getting your quads and your glutes and everything really fired up. Um, then we go on to what I call the functional phase, which is giving us a chance to stabilize and produce force. So this would be something like um, an inline kneeling chop. So let's just say, this is just a super band. We would use a cable or a bungee. But if we go, um, let's go our inside foot forward. So if I get in line so that my knee is in line with my heel, and then I do a chop. So I'm exerting force with my upper body. I'm using my torso to stabilize. And because I'm in that narrow kneeling position, I also have to use my hips to stabilize. So exerting force but challenging my body to stabilize that force as we go. And the reps get a little bit smaller in there. Then we go on to a max strength phase. Um, but we can still challenge our stability. Like we might do, you know, we would still do like a deadlift or a squat, like a front squat or something like that. But we'd also one day do like a single leg deadlift so that we had to have that stabilization element in there as well. Um, we use a lot of single leg squats. Max strength development is really one of your keystones for speed development. So when we get athletes that come into revolution and they, they need to be faster, they wanna work on their speed, I always make sure they understand that we're gonna do, you know, and again, following the progressions, you can't just be like, oh, speed, max strength builds speed, okay, so I'm gonna just start at max strength. No, it doesn't work that way. So we have to build up, but building strength is, especially for a high school athlete, is gonna be our easiest way to make them faster. So that, that's gonna be a huge part of it. Um, 
We also don't load up kind of goalie specific patterns. So it's another mistake that you see in some like YouTubers. Um, we don't, it looks really cool. And again, when you look at it, you're like, yeah, that looks like exactly what I need. You know, that guy's got he like wearing a heavy weight vest or got a barbell and he's doing hops side to side or, you know, pushes side to side. That's what I need to do. We don't do speed exercises when we're training strength. We just build strength. We want to keep stability in there, but we're not getting sort of fussy with our function or we're not doing, you know, alternate knee recoveries, holding heavy dumbbells. That just, um, it's just silly. <laughs> but yeah, it's just, it's putting heavy load on stabilizers. We're moving slow. So we're in a pattern where we want to be fast. We're actually moving slower. And then we're actually not able to use enough weight to build our big, powerful muscles. So just yeah it's just pretty basic big strength movements and then we pepper in with your goalie specific stability and um functional movement patterns and things like that but if the goal is strength we just do sort of big ones so uh, yeah we don't squat on a ball or anything like that then the next phase is power so how fast can we apply that force and then teaching athletes how to apply the force very quick again you guys um Probably if you watched three years ago, I talked a lot about two or three years ago, you know, big, powerful push, get a big, full push. Well, you know, then when I spend more time with goalie coaches, like, well, but big, powerful pushes leave big, powerful holes <laughs> uh, that, you know, are open for longer, take longer to close, and there's more space for the puck to go in. So, you know, when we are working, trying to work that specific kind of power, you know, it's more those quick pushes we still want them to be powerful. We still want to get good displacement, but we want it to be, you know, we talked about this idea of the one inch punch that, you know, Bruce Lee talked about that you're so powerful, you can knock someone over with a one inch punch. So teaching them to use that kind of, um, you know, use their power the way they need it on the ice or the way you need it on the ice. So that's just the strength portion. Then there's, uh, which is really what I wanted to focus on today, but then there's the speed and the stamina portion. And again, normal people, <laughs> speed training and stamina training doesn't really make us goalie fast or give us goalie stamina. And it's not that you can't ever do sprints. You definitely can, um, but they also have to work in your goalie specific pattern. So one of your big speed elements and stamina elements is vertical agility, up and down, how quickly you can get up and down and it hardly ever gets trained. Now, a big point with this is, I don't want you smashing into your butterfly, um, you know, and over and over to work on your goalie specific agility. Again, that's just adding wear and tear and it's exponentially magnifying the wear and tear on your joints. You get enough of that on the ice but there are ways that we can train it that are safer and still help your muscles get that speed that you need. Um, yeah, and when we do those patterns, like so say we're doing a stamina drill, well, we'd like you to have change of direction, maybe change in vertical displacement. You still need to keep a stable torso. You know, when I see um, kids doing agility drills, let's say, or not kids, but you know, high school athletes or, uh, athletes and they're, you know, they're doing their agility pattern and their arms are all over the place or, you know, they're not low in their legs, you know, that's like their torso isn't square. It's like, well, when is your body going to learn that? You know, you're, you're telling your body, hey, we're working on your speed, we're working on your agility, we're working on some precision using the ladder, so we should be moving with precision. I don't mind, people scoff at it. You know, they say, oh, people just go like glove and blocker, you know, oh, then it's goalie specific. But you know what? I do have to have my hands in a certain position. So why not practice keeping them there and then also be aware, hey, where, so where are my glove and blocker? You know, if I'm moving, if I'm moving to my right in the agility ladder, you know, and my glove and blocker over here, you know, that's, that's sort of not helping to reinforce what my goalie coach is telling me to do on the ice so i think from that perspective you know things like that that there's a place where you can take something from the ice and use it when you're doing your training or you know just where should your eyes be looking if you're leading you know leading with your head and following with your chest and shoulders um so 
adding in elements with that. Um, yeah, that's that's all I got for you. I guess I'll do, uh, yeah, I'll do a plug because I'm opening up the Turning Pro Coaching Program for enrollment for the first time in a year. Um, this year there is a huge bonus um, that I won't tell you about, but other than to say it's actually wicked awesome. So you might want to check it out. I'll put a link somewhere in the comments or description or somewhere there will be a link uh, that you can go and check it out but otherwise this is maria from goalie training pro tv finishing up episode 14 on strategic off-ice training